Welcome to another episode of Girls Know Nothing. Today, I have Faith Kelly with me in the studio. Um, I want to say I'm so sorry again for how hot it is in here. That's okay. No worries. We've got the jumper on. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't control the temperature or the weather, but you can control the no, fact you're I mean, wearing I've, I've tried to mix match it because it's raining outside, but it's still technically hot. I thought shorts, hoodie. But it's kind of still not that because I am sweating. But I just fine. don't want to get in trouble for, you know, making you and unborn child very warm. She's fine. She's fine. <laughs> so um, for those people that don't necessarily know who you are, mm -hmm. if you want to give a little bit of an introduction to yourself. Yeah. So those who probably do know me, obviously it will probably be off of TikTok um, or as Ethan's girlfriend, otherwise known as. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is the biggest social platform. If you don't know, then get to know you yeah, know, if, if you don't know already, up. you need to go and look up Faith on TikTok. <laughs> exactly. But um, so I know you've mentioned TikTok and being Ethan's girlfriend, but mm -hmm. we didn't mention um, Dress to Impress. No, no, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why is that? How did you end up on a dating show? Well, they DM'd me on Instagram. I'd just come out of a long term on and off relationship, very broken relationship, but on and off. Um, but it had ended and they DM'd me. So I thought, do you know what? Like, I'm bored at this point. Um, let's go out, have some fun. Like, what could go wrong? I didn't know that I was going to have a social media following over the next two, three years, and the clips would come back and bite me in the bum. <laughs> but, to be fair, what better way to stick it to your ex-boyfriend than ending up on TV? Yeah. On a dating show? Do, I don't even know if he's seen it. Do you know, do you know when you block for the last time? Oh, So right. I don't know what he's seen and what he's not. Well, he definitely sees you on social media now. <laughs> no, I do. No, I do. Um, no, so, I do. you know, um, I Google all of my guests, which mm -hmm. is probably like the weirdest thing to say to somebody like, oh, yeah. I Google you. But when I do Google you, mm -hmm. it mainly does, it mainly is Ethan, yeah. Ethan's girlfriend, mm -hmm. Ethan's baby mama. That's the one. I can imagine how frustrating it is because you were your, like, I mean, you still are your yeah. own businesswoman mm -hmm. on TikTok, your own creator. So like, how does that feel to just be like branded as Ethan's girlfriend? Do you know what? I feel like people get confused where you make your money on TikTok because people assume I have 30p in the bank, right? Um, and obviously I, I get how it looks because I am at home all the time. Like when I am on TikTok, I probably am at home. So a lot of the comments are like, does she even work? Like, do you ever get off TikTok? And I'm like, I'm literally making money now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but they, I think people seem to get confused and think it's the creator's fund that pays me, which people know is very, very low. And it's like yeah. 17p for like a million views. I think that's where they get the misconception of what I earn. But obviously the management behind sources, the promos, and then not all promos are obvious, like the sound promos. Like I could literally just be um, using a TikTok sound and you wouldn't know how much I've got paid for that, but you just think I'm uploading a video. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because when I was looking at your TikTok channel, it's like quite a lot of fitness and beauty stuff. And mm -hmm. like everyone knows in this industry that if you have a fitness or beauty creator, they do make money from collaborations with other brands and things like exactly. that. Exactly. So this is the thing, but... Because Ethan makes more money, a lot more than what I would ever probably be able to make, people assume everything gets funded through him and I don't make anything, which is wrong. But it is what it is. I, like, I'm not going to start screenshotting my bank and improve <laughs> it. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm not going to say like, oh, who, who covered this bill when we was out? Who covered that one? So it's no one's business. No, it's not. And I think that's the thing with the partnership. Like, as long as you are both in agreement mm -hmm. to like how things are funded, how things work, like what the split of work is, yeah. then like that's not anyone else's business. Well, this is the thing. Like he takes care of the higher bills and I'll take care of the more manageable lower bills. That's just how it is. But then people forget in most common law relationships, there will possibly be one partner who earns more and who earns less. And I'm going to stick my dad in it here. Sorry, dad. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad is a house husband and my mum makes all the money. But then people would just assume... Is the man who makes the because, money. Yeah, you know what man. I mean? But I don't know. I think it's really common for the person who makes more to care for more. So you're not putting your other partner in a position where they're going to end up in debt. Because that, that will only affect them anyway, won't it? Yeah, of course. So I don't know. I think people just need to realise how common it is for the one to be earning more to... Kind of take a take, bit more on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like... It's if not it was you... the, exactly. If it was the other way around, 
I'd be doing the exact same thing. So. Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, um, off camera briefly before we started rolling, we were talking about how you and Ethan met or how mm-hmm. you started dating. Um, and you said that it came through um, like as a follow, yeah. cheeky slide into the DMs, how most modern relationships work, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, every person that I've ever spoken to that didn't kind of come up in the public eye with a partner, like as in people leaving in relationships from Love Island, mm-hmm. they always say they would never date a man who is in the public eye or blue tick boys is what we call them. Yeah. Because of a, like attention and things like that. So like how does like how do you manage yeah. kind of that because the side men are big names online. Well, like I've said many a times um like on social media, I didn't know who the side men was, right? So he is literally just a guy with a blue tick, right? Like I said before when we were speaking about it, like he followed me but nothing happened like no one slid into anyone's dms I didn't slide into his because he's got blue tick he followed me and then a week later I mugged him off on socials and then he put a laughing face in my dms and that's how it went um but I don't I don't know because I didn't know who they were when I eventually met him and we went out that's when people start asking for pictures and things like that but it's like I don't know, it's fine. Like, I feel like everyone's got their job at the end of the day and that is his job. So I now need to adapt to him, you know? Yeah. I can't be mad that girls are coming up to him asking for pictures, wanting videos, screaming, like, whatever. It's, it's now not my place. That's his job. That's what comes with his job. So you either accept it or you don't be with this person. But is there an element where this, this is his job kind of crosses the line? So, um, you know... I've said to you that I grew up watching Sidemen before they became Sidemen. And like, they're well known for their like Tinder videos. <laughs> and I think you know where I'm going to go with this, right? So um, obviously there was one particular Sidemen Tinder video where... Yeah. Um, what a, one? Remind me? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, if you hadn't already forgotten, I'm going to bring it back up again. But there was one particular Sidemen Tinder video where um, an adult um, actress had mm-hmm. sat on Ethan's lap during Mm. the video yeah um you know I actually I've seen a lot of other people's opinions on it but actually I've not seen very much from you on how you feel about the subject and considering it's your boyfriend Mm -hmm. and your relationship Mm -hmm. well obviously people on socials I'll take their take first before my own um a lot of the comments were saying obviously Faith's not actually mad about this like she gets to like choose what goes out and what doesn't I get no say I said to Ethan when he so when he told me about what happened in LA he said that she went to sit on him Mm -hmm. but the boys pulled him away and I was like okay like a little bit annoying but whatever so in my head I'm thinking she didn't do it like it was an almost which is like fair fuck do you know what I mean um and then he got home and said oh I've got the clip do you want to see it and I saw it and she did sit on him and I was like so have you like ever sat down and had like that conversation about where lines do get crossed up until that moment yeah of course so Ethan is 100% loyal right and I know he's made himself like like an idiot but he is he is a really good boy he's loyal he's just an idiot like he's he was I don't know it's it's hard to it's hard to kind of explain without making him sound like bad or make me come across bad at the same time um obviously he knows it shouldn't have been done he regretted it as soon as it happened but he thought it was going to be a classic tinder line of like because obviously it's like Paul now isn't it like help him stark like that's the kind of vibe but he thought she was just going to go what like no or like first when he said it I didn't really get it yeah no he had to explain it to me as well and this is the the thing about um, having boyfriends in the public eye as opposed to having girlfriends in the public mm-hmm. eye is that I find that maybe like fangirls are a bit more pushy or forward mm-hmm. than fanboys are. So like how I've looked at my DMs versus male islanders, for example, are very, very different. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's like, because your relationship is so in the public eye and so in blast and because you are pregnant, mm-hmm. um, like how like how amplified is your relationship? Like how much pressure does it oh, add to well, your relationship? So the thing is, obviously, again, everyone's like, oh, this clip obviously happened ages ago. Like they filmed this like two, three weeks ago. Faith's obviously over it by now. And I'm like, Okay, so obviously I have been a bit annoyed for a couple of weeks, but then I'd been dreading the date that that gets released because, like I said, I get no say in what goes out. I said to Eve and I said, can this, your bit, be cut out because it's embarrassing for me. 
Yeah, That's, of course. I wasn't mad, upset. I was embarrassed because I immediately knew how people were going to view that. Um, and obviously it's just a, like he's the only one expecting a child, you know, things like that. So it's like, don't do that, you know. It's, it's one of them, like, can you cut it? No, we can't because obviously the segments were recorded in LA. They can't go and change it. They can't make it happen again. They can't just exclude him from one. Um, so I was like, okay, as soon as it went up, DMs, 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 videos on TikTok, like all saying that, like, oh, Faith, I wouldn't be having this if I was you. Like really getting involved in our relationships. And then I had people calling him like a cheater and like girls in my DMs saying, oh, don't worry, like my man cheated on me too. And I'm just like, what do you, like genuinely, what do you think you're doing with my emotions right now? Yeah, you know? of course. Um, so yeah, it wasn't nice, but it happened. And about three days after the video, um, was released, ended up having a panic attack about it because I got a really nasty DM because um, obviously me and Mia started like back and forth in with videos, which is obviously fine. I don't think anything overly bad was said either way. Um, but one of them was really nasty and kind of dragged in how I was going to be as a mother if I can't accept what Ethan does for work. But I'm a bit confused because when has he ever had like a female actress sit on his lap in a mukbang? Yeah, That's not what he does for work. That's what she does for work. Yeah, of course. You know? Um, but yeah, no, I ended up having a panic attack and Ethan came running upstairs. He was like, what is going on? And I was just like, like I've literally had enough. I was like, I don't want to do any of these socials anymore. Like having like an eight-month-old baby in your belly and then not being able to breathe, it's literally the scariest thing ever. But still to this day, I still get messages about it. So I can imagine like being on the receiving end of a lot of messages is hard enough as it is obviously when you are pregnant it's not just your physical well-being you mm. have to to look out for and because the side men are so big and have like a massive cult following mm -hmm. I can imagine that draws in a lot of unwanted online attention do you know what it is it's everyone can never look bad so Ethan can't look bad which is fine I'm I don't want him to look bad but it's always hate towards me so me I like, there shouldn't be any hate towards her. She's just doing what she's got to do. So all the hate comes back to me purely just for being Ethan's girlfriend when I've not done anything to be involved in that. I just personally hadn't liked that boundary being stepped over, which I think is fair enough, you know? I do think that's fair. And I think it's really important in relationships to have those boundaries in place. Otherwise, how are you going to have yeah. healthy relationships? And I think, you know, one thing I did hear about as well is that when you first announced, mm -hmm. or like when public or on social media about your relationship with Ethan that you were on the receiving end of quite violent yeah. messages as well yeah I've, I've, not, I've not had nice messages the whole way through and I thought oh like by this point it's been over a year whatever it will die down no if anything they've just got worse so unfortunately there was a side plus clip that come out so we was pregnant at the time, but nobody knew about it. So literally no one, um, not even their editors. Um, and I think it was like JJ, Simon and someone else. I can't remember. But there was like, oh, when do you think um, the side men will like start slowing down? Like, And then there was like, oh, probably when one of us has like a kid or a baby. And then the editors, obviously, again, it's not their fault because they didn't know. They put in like, they put in really emotional music over the clip and then they put the end of the side when it's near in like red bold letters and I said to Ethan you need to get that taken down now because as soon as people find out we're pregnant I'm just going to get the blame for being the end of the side mem when that wasn't what was technically said it's just how it was put out this little snippet of the clip you know like clickbait yeah yeah but they won't see it as clickbait. They'll see end of the side men, someone has a kid. So ever since I've been pregnant, all I've got is you're ruining the side men. You're the reason the side men has ended. Um, I've had messages saying, hope your baby dies. Hope wow. you die in childbirth so this doesn't happen again. Like, I've had awful messages. That's, that's really, like, upsetting, quite disgusting to hear. And it's weird that people only see the side men and Ethan as online characters as mm. opposed to actual people because eventually at some point they will like you know half of them are engaged yeah. right and but, it, but this is the down. thing that they are nearly all 30 year old men Ethan's out in the middle point somewhere you know a lot of them are older than Ethan at what point do they slow down you know I feel like they've kept going quite a long time but the thing is 
nothing's been said that they're going to stop or that they're slowing down. I've now been pregnant eight months and their content hasn't changed. Yeah, of course. So it's weird that it's still being said saying that you're ruining the sidemen when literally nothing has changed in how they work or what they do. It's a weird thing as well. And I think people forget that, okay, social media, especially at their level, can be very full on. Mm. But because of how flexible it is and you are your own boss, you can move things around and manage things a lot easier. And it's really weird because I feel like if there were female side men, Mm -hmm. side women. Side girls. (laughs) uh, Yeah, literally. And one of them got pregnant. I don't ever feel like the male partner would get Mm. abuse or anywhere near the same level of abuse that you've been on the receiving end of. I don't know why. I I feel like I've been right in, I don't know, they've just not stopped. But I feel like I get it more than the others get it. Um, Is it because you're new? And like, whereas like, for example, Talia's kind of like been in their relationship I, I would say so, yeah. But then I think because she was kind of online first anyway, okay. I feel like that helped. Whereas I'm seen as a gold digger, things like that, because I wasn't like... Famous before. Famous before, yeah. But I think that's, it's really strange because I just, I'm, I'm still trying to piece like things you said to me off camera as well about your relationship, which to me seems perfectly normal. And as long as like both parties are happy and it's consensual and like you've agreed on specific things... It's weird to me that as a as a, a woman that you're mm-hmm. on the backlash, but then if you were earning more, you would also be on the backlash. Yeah. Like, there's, do you ever see a point in w- your relationship where you can win with the public? No, I, I feel like it will always be I'm not good enough for him because they don't, I don't tick their boxes. And I think it's one thing that really. I've been trying to like understand it while we're out having this conversation about how people are bringing your unborn child into mm. the conversation. And do you ever like, are you ever concerned what's going to happen with her as she gets older because she yeah. will be born into the public eye and have so many yeah. people watching her childhood? Well, this is the thing. It's a conversation of do you put your baby online or not? But this is the problem me and Ethan have is people don't respect our privacy. So... When we first started dating, we had every intention to keep it under the wraps, keep it quiet. I didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. But the Simon fans, obviously, like I say, I had some followers before. So some knew me, some knew Ethan. All you got to have is one person that knows Ethan and me. That's all it took. I had green nails. My horse trod on Ethan's toe and broke his toe. Um, And my bedding was a white and black spotty bedding at the time. All his Instagram story had in was my nails holding his toe just so it could see it for the camera. You know, he's got bonky toes. I'm going to see it if you just film it straight. So I was literally just holding his toe. You could see a tiny bit of my bed in and a green nail. And someone realised he followed me. Oh, and it blew up online. Literally within like 10 minutes, there was TikToks about it. And they all, by the next morning, had millions of views, like confirmed dating, circled videos. The videos are literally still on YouTube going, um, Bazinga's girlfriend, like, cons- like confirmed. Um, so we just think people won't respect our privacy. If they see us out, people will video. And I feel like that's going to be worse than if we just put her out anyway, you know, if that makes sense. But I think if we put her online and we're starting to get nasty comments, because you don't, you don't be nasty to someone that's not contributed anything to this world. You can't talk. Yeah. You can't. You can't bully a child, you know? She's not done anything. So I think that's where we'll see where the level of ma- maturity lies. Can she be put online or can she not? Like, will people dig at a child? Or won't they, you know? Which you is horrible. You want to control it yourself, don't you? And if you beat everyone else to it, then there's yeah. no, like... I want to say bounty for lack of a better mm-hmm. word. Like there is no person out there trying to monetize your child. Exactly. Yeah. And try and get there before everyone else. So yeah. I can imagine it's like a really hard territory to kind of like cross. Like, do you respect your privacy more? Or do you worry about someone trying to make money off your yeah. child? Exactly. Exactly. Well, this is the thing. People say if we kept her off and like we say, they saw us out, if they videoed it, they would just put it up just because they know they'd get views. You know, all you got to put is that old, like, Bazinga and Face baby, and it would just skyrocket. Yeah, you know? exactly. I think that was, like, one of the... When I was Googling you, it comes up with, like, a list of questions, and, like, mm-hmm. you and baby yeah. were, like, one of the most Googled things. And, like, yeah. you know, you're only 22. Yeah. Does that 
worry you because like you being a first time mum is scary enough yeah. no matter what your age is yeah being a young first time mum and in the public eye yeah and uh, and the fact that it's a very 50 50 ratio into who likes me and who doesn't yeah you know I feel like again obviously I'm not bringing them down for this but I feel like say if it was another side girl to be in this situation I feel like they wouldn't have a problem putting their child online because they don't get the same sort of backlash that I do. Like I said, I don't know what it was before, but currently I feel like I'm very much the most hated side girl. Like, that's, I don't know why I could go on a side girl. <laughs> it makes it sound really bad, <laughs> it sound like it? banned, <laughs> the side girls. But I don't know, I just, I don't know, I've just got to see how people take it. But it's, it's, it's not nice, I think. Like I say, I haven't had a panic attack since I was about 14. Yeah. Like, they do not come easy to me at all. Um, Like you say, it's the pressure of a new time mum. Am I going to be good at it? Will I be able to do it? Will I need Ethan more than what I think I will? You know, because he's got four weeks paternity, which is great, really, because they only get two weeks, don't they, normally? Yeah, normally. So I think they've given him four weeks paternity, um, which is good. But And then it is... Me and baby, you know? Yeah. Because he will have to go back to work and things like that. But do you ever feel lonely because none of the other sidemen girlfriends have experienced what you've experienced? Then there's nobody to kind of like guide you and help you through it after being through it themselves? Um, no, I wouldn't put that on them specifically. Like I say, I know that I am a young mum. Um, so no one is really that I know has been in my situation. So if anything, I don't know, I'm the, like, there's no one really that I can talk to other than my parents or whatever because they're the only ones that I know that have had babies. Yeah, you of know? course. Um, but I don't know. I feel like it's just because we're the first. The rest will follow. I yeah, think. I'm sure. They'll, they'll soon follow. The engagements are coming in like dominoes, aren't exactly, they? So exactly. once one of you has a baby, <laughs> they're all going to start exactly, having babies. Exactly, this is the thing. And people have said that as well, like, oh, they're not even married. And I'm like, okay, well, I can't control that, can I? Oh, it's also 2022. I mean? This is what I mean. Like, my mum said that, um, like, when we first announced the baby, she was like, but you're not engaged. And I was like, well, it's also not the 1960s, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, it's on our agenda. We've just done it in the wrong orders, you know? Yeah, but I mean, everybody's... You can do what you want. Order is yeah, different exactly. of what you want in life. And, like, you know, whether your baby is planned or unplanned, as long mm-hmm. as you're happy in the With position the decision, you're in, it's exactly. not anybody else's business. Because like, when you think about it, both of your careers aren't traditional yeah so what's the point of being traditional for tradition's sake yeah. instead of yeah. actually what you want at the time and quite a lot of people nowadays want to have their own children involved in their wedding mm-hmm. oh yeah flower girl for sure you've already she's got that. the job <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're training her for the moment yeah. she's out of the womb how to be a flower girl <laughs> so another one of the things that i wanted to talk to you about is that obviously I've seen you on Instagram and you're doing your Q&As and things and a lot of the common themes that I see is about how you will be as a mum and mm-hmm. I know that's like a really hard topic to, to talk about openly but I think one of the questions that I I think I found annoying mm-hmm. and I can't imagine what it was like for you to be re- on the receiving end but it was the automatic assumption that because Ethan's successful that you will automatically stop working you will be just in his shadow and not work and like all of those kinds of questions so like how what do you say to those kinds of people that automatically just assume that you're going to be Well, I mum? think the same as everyone life goes, just because you have a baby, you don't stop your life, you know? When you have a baby, you very much adapt it to what you do. So like I've said, um, like I've given the management a heads up, you know, like when I have the baby, someone's got a holder on the side. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I'm not just going to immediately stop. That's not how it works. I'm not going to get my penny on and start making them a cake for every time it comes home and enters the door do you know what I mean yeah like it's just not how it works anymore like I get that's how it used to work but both parents can work now and why would you not want both parents to work and have an income I know he's more than takes care of both of us all of us whatever but why would you then I don't know I think people have a problem with me and the assumption that I'm living off of his money to then expecting me to live off his money you know, and you just can't win, basically. Yeah, no, I can't win because now it's well, I should be home taking care of the baby while he's at work, which obviously I will be doing. It will just be coming to work with me, so to say. How have you found like this industry and management when it comes to 
having a child because actually I don't think I know anyone in this industry who has a baby. Do you know what? I was actually thinking that on a train here. I was like, I'm so lucky to have actually signed to a new management being pregnant, you know? Because if you think about a normal job, they don't usually take on pregnant women, do they? Because they expect maternity leave and things like that. And obviously the risk of them having another child, them wanting more maternity leave. So I feel like, like it was nice, you know? Like the respect and that want to have me with them... I don't know, it just makes you want to work hard. Were you ever nervous about signing to a new management because of reasons like that? Mm, Do you know what? It didn't actually cross my mind. It only only after (laughs) it happened, I was like, hmm, but no. Because I guess like like I say, it's like it's still me as a person. She's just going to then be an addition to me. It's like bringing your dog to work. Yeah, I guess if you're like just add baby yeah. into the content creating. <laughs> but I mean, like, for me, I kind of wanted to like gauge a little bit more about what your long term career goals and because I don't want to sit here and just talk about you being a girlfriend and a mum mm-hmm. because, you know, you've probably had yeah. it to the back teeth. Like, I want to know a bit more about your long term career goals. And, you know, as a working mum, how do you see that working and what your plans are? Um, well, I think we've got some uh, things in a pipeline that like we've said. Um, like me and Ethan would like to have like a TV show or whatever or a little series that we can do is like because where we live it's nice it's like a little farmland um, oh, nice. so it's really cute so you can make like a little a nice little I don't know like a little show of it so to say like you know like Billy and Sam the Mummy Diaries things oh, like yeah. that kind of like those but like farm-ish versions you know it's weird because I really could not Im- I guess because you're a you are like grew up in the countryside with yeah, horses yeah. I just couldn't imagine any of them being yeah. in the countryside do you know what it just give me a good excuse to just bring home animals all the time because although, <laughs> although we got the land for it I'd be like it's for the show we need the six sheep you know <laughs> but had I go and bought the six sheep now I think I'd get a bit told off <laughs> is that like is that what you want to do like long time like being on TV and do more TV work or do you want to do more TikTok like what's the, what's the um, plan? Do you know, I feel like TikTok's love and hate I feel like because where I've not got a niche so to say like okay. I've not like some are just makeup some are just comedy you know I've not really got anything I just put anything up there so yeah. sometimes I get a little bit like dry on content or I've always used it as a personal account so if I had 10 followers 100 followers to now a million it would still be me just posting what I want to post I don't really see myself as a creator or an influence if that makes sense like I'm literally just using the app the same as everyone else is um so sometimes I get a little bit a little bit slow for content so I would like to like branch out on other things like YouTube things like that but only to kind of stay relevant so I can keep working off of it. Um, not to get fame or like fame hunt, nothing like that, purely to still get my own income because this has been the best income that I have ever had. And had I go back to another office job and quit what I'm doing, I would not be making the same money as what I do now. I wouldn't be able to help Ethan in the same ways or contribute in the same ways as I can. And just as a whole, this job has been best for me like mental health wise things like that um so yeah I, I don't know I, I, I feel like I'm happiest doing what I'm doing now so I'd like to just keep it up in the ways that I can I think one of the things as well that really is missing about you on the online is what you actually were doing before social yeah. media or like what if you didn't end up on social media what would you seen yourself doing and like those types of things so I actually started um TikTok when I got let go at the beginning of COVID okay. um, at my old job and I was doing quantity surveying and I was there for four years doing that but I hated it it was not me at Sounds all I'm sorry dry yeah oh, 100% <laughs> dry <laughs> but no it, it wasn't good so I'm glad they paid me essentially to leave the company because you know I would have left for free you know um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway I did that and then obviously COVID again being in COVID couldn't really find any work my mum owns a nursery so I just downloaded TikTok the same as everyone did in COVID like everyone downloaded TikTok so I was just kind of like not really on it to be anything just using the app again same as everyone else whilst working for my mum at the nursery so I worked for her for about a year and a half I think um so yeah no I loved that I think if I wasn't in social media I would definitely still be working in the nursery just working with children instead of working with 
I mean, you get, oh, listen, right. So yes, the kids can be a lot, like you do go home for a headache pretty much every day, right? Like, but there's, I don't know, they're just so nice. Like you can't have a bad day working with kids because say if you get six that do you write in, you'll get that one that just says something that just makes you day. I don't know, they're just, just innocent, aren't they? You either love or hate kids, <laughs> don't you? You're looking at me like, couldn't think of anything worse. Oh, I couldn't <laughs> think of anything worse. You're absolutely right, yeah. <laughs> but then, um, you, then you get all the school holidays. So for someone that doesn't like going to work, things like that, would like a holiday, you get a school break every six weeks. You get the six weeks holiday. You're, you're trying to sell it to me. Nine like. to three. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm going to leave yeah. all of a sudden to go work with children. <laughs> So one of the things that I really did want to touch upon as well is that I just felt, I did see bits of your gender reveal like online, but I just don't feel like it got as much press as I'd expected it to be. Um, do you want to talk us through your gender reveal? Because I felt like it was like quiet, but quite big as well. Yeah, I mean, it was done at our house. So like in all of our fields, things like that. Um, but yeah, it didn't get much press because there was no like press invited. You know, we wanted it as a intimate event. So we only had close friends and family. We didn't have anyone like, you know, we're kind of friends with, you know, like we wanted it like, what's the word? It begins with an I. Immediate. Immediate. Yeah, I think so. Something of intermediate, which is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, we only wanted immediate friends and family there and obviously to share the day with Um but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Were you, did you have your heart set on yeah. being a girl? Yeah. So now she is a girl, I can say that. But because <laughs> everyone beforehand was like, do you have a preference, like boy or girl? And you go, oh, no, like as long as it's healthy, baby, you know, I don't mind what it is. But you are kind of sitting on, you know, I kind of do want a girl a little bit. But I only wanted a girl more so than a boy because I've got three brothers and my cousins boys you know I, I've come from a very male dominated family anyway so I just thought oh it'd be nice to have like a sister or something growing up but no so now I can have the mum and daughter relationship but we have said going forward we, we, we would like some boys I think so it's probably quite nice for your mum in that sense to be a grandma to, mm -hmm. a, to a daughter well granddaughter and then you guys can like have that really nice bond and relationship yeah. like how did your parents kind of react to my you mum saying? thought I was gonna have a boy the whole way through oh really yeah yeah so how it's done is I don't, don't know if I've got this the right way around but the girls carry the x chromosome and the boys carry the x and the y so they choose yeah. the gender so everyone thought because I'm from a male family yeah um that the baby would be a boy because the odds are just way higher to be a boy than a girl. But the dad picks the gender. I did not so know the that. Only, so only the dad can choose, or well, he can't choose. But <laughs> Otherwise, I feel like he would have chosen to be a boy. Only the dad shoots out boys or girls. <laughs> like we, have, we don't have the part that makes it a boy or a girl. So could be a whole family of girls. Wow. Whatever Ethan shoots. That's, <laughs> that's a really weird image to have. Like that's, you learn something new every day. It's like a biology podcast now. Yeah. I don't know if that's, really, like, that's really interesting. And I bet it's really nice for you to have that mother-daughter relationship and be able to learn from your mum yeah. about your mother-daughter yeah, dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, was, what do you think the biggest advice that she has given you so far would be? Oh God, she gives me a good luck, if anything. She's yet, <laughs> she's yet to do the advice. If she's anything like you, good luck. <laughs> this is it. This is literally it in black and white. You've got it. All three boys were easier than having one girl. Really? Yeah. I feel like that must have been in your house, because in my house it was the complete opposite. Oh really? Yeah. No, the boy I, was more dramatic. No, I have got to say my teenage years weren't the best behaved, so to say. It wasn't, wasn't that nice to my mum and dad, you know. Oh. But what teenager ever is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so so if, 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 she's any, if she's anything like me, I've got it coming. But, you know, we calm down. We're nice now. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know who you're trying to give it to. Just, just, <laughs> just, just, just a bit of trouble. But, yeah, no, my brothers are very, very easy going. They're like, don't do this. They're like, okay. Like, we was, me and my two youngest brothers, so it leaves the old one, we was all having a conversation the other day about how, like, being told off by dad, things like that, like, things he's done, like, things that we've done. My older brother was just sitting quiet like this. And I was like, you've never been told off by dad like that, have you? And he was like, no. Nah. 
<laughs> no, no idea what you're talking about. He literally couldn't join in the conversation at all. I was like, wow. <laughs> what do you see? Because obviously you, you want to be a working mum. So like, how do you see yourself being a mum? Oh God, in a month's time. How scary oh is God, that? Oh God, I know, I know. Um, I don't know. I, I just feel like she's going to be in here forever. I'm not even convinced she's coming out. Because when you I know? first met you, I was like, wow, you don't even look eight months pregnant. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, it's really like blows my mind that next month, or maybe even the next time I see you, you yeah. will be with child. I know. Um, I don't know. It's strange to me too as well. I, I don't know. I'm just, mm, I don't know. We're just manifesting the safe delivery and then anything else that comes after, I feel like we'll just go with the flow. As long as she's at like actually, you know, healthy, safe. I've had a healthy, safe delivery as well. Um, then I think we're going to bounce back. Well, we'd like to bounce back cre- pretty quick, you know. I don't, I don't want to lose everything that I've worked towards purely just because I've had a baby. Yeah, you know? of course. Um, some things, obviously, you naturally have to take the back seat on, like, you can't do certain things anymore, but... Bottomless brunches are out the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, unless your baby's sitting, then I can still go. <laughs> but, yeah, no, yeah, look, you, you win some, you lose some. But I feel, I don't know, I think it's going to be cute, like, take her to Old McDonald's farm. Oh, I you love know? that you've already planned all of the things the you're going out. to do. Yeah, sensory rooms. Matching outfits. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Matching and catch me wearing headbands. Oh. Matching bows. <laughs> it's, um, as well, like when we were talking about work and being a working mum, like obviously, even though I don't think that there's been that traditional formal announcement, I think it's well known that you are part of the same management and about the whole female empowerment yeah. vibe. So like what really attracted you to like kind of working in this environment and like wanting to be surrounded by more women? Um, I think, again, being pregnant showed me um from previous experiences still being pregnant um how I don't know how I'd like to work with a team and I feel like sometimes men don't get it yeah you know so say if I said I really need to push this deadline back like I am not well they were like okay well it needs to be done and that is kind of not how it works like if I'm like there's been situations where I've said like my back has like it's locked itself out and I cannot stand up and walk so I don't know how you expect me to go and actively go out do a promo and then come back I can't move and I feel like it's that understanding with women that like even like with period pains things like that men don't get it you're being treated as dramatic yeah yeah so it's like okay like I get it, it hurts a bit but go and do it it's like if I could do it and it hurts a bit I would have done it by now yeah, of course. You know? Um, so I feel like it's just that having that understanding as a woman, being a woman, you know? It, it's the same, same emotional respect. support and respect, like you say. And uh, and I feel like I could still work at this management with a baby because I'd feel comfortable leaving her. Not leaving her, but giving but her on the side. Around, you know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, like Stacey Solomon does. She, gives, she takes it to work, doesn't she? It, oh God, shakes. What's the baby's name? Rose. <laughs> I was going to say, like, uh, Stacey that Solomon. That was really bad. Is, that was bad. But no, she takes Rose to work and she just, she just chills while I she feel films. Like she's a really good role model in terms of, like, yeah. being a working mum because she has more than one, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, she got four. Yeah, and she has a very successful career. So, you mm-hmm. know, if Stacey Solomon can make it work, then, Exactly. Well, know. this is, this is kind of who we're trying to follow in the footsteps of, so to say, because I feel like there's other mum influencers that are very much like, oh, I cut, star-shaped sandwiches like my house is spotless like I do all these sensory things and I feel like that can kind of make other mums feel bad yeah. because they put out such a perfect image of how they are as a mum that it can make others feel bad that they're not doing the same thing so I do just want to be completely transparent say when I'm having bad days say when she's having bad days and also share all the good times together as well so I do still want it to be very transparent that we are a very much a normal family. By like normalising the bad days of motherhood. Exactly, exactly. I've done it with my pregnancy and on social media, I've had so many DMs just going, you know what you were signing up for, so why are you moaning about it? Were they I'm for like, men what? by any yeah, chance? Yeah, no, they were. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I'm not moaning about it, I'm sharing that yeah. I'm not having a good day today being pregnant. That doesn't mean because I chose to keep the pregnancy and see it through, become a mum, that I'm not going, that I now have to enjoy the bad days and sometimes how it has made me feel, 
you know? Yeah. Do you feel like that maybe is part of the public pressure that you're receiving that you have to look like you're happy with everything all of the time? Yeah, 100%. I, I could never say like, oh, I'm hating my pregnancy today. They'd be like, wow, so you don't want his baby and knew he shouldn't have been with you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, come on. Oh, uh, yeah. So basically you can't win, but I feel yeah. like that's any, <laughs> any woman in any industry yeah. at this point. But um, I always end the episodes of the podcast with the same question. Mm-hmm. Um, so what would you say to somebody who doubts you and your future success based on the fact you are a woman? Hmm. <laughs> and a pregnant one for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I can't really say what I'd say, really. You know, not PG basically. No, is what it's I'm not getting. PG. <laughs> not PG. How do I word it? I don't know. Like you just you just have to filter people out like that, don't you? Like if someone was to come up to me and say, "You're not going to be this. You're literally just a mum now. Take the back seat." I think you just use that as your motivation to step up. You know, on the ladder um, and show them what you can be. You know, yeah, no. I, I feel like there's not much you you can say in a way. I think this is the thing about being a woman and especially one that's about to be a mother is that it just shows a lot of strength because even deciding that you're going to put somebody else before you is Mm. like a massive amount of effort anyway. But but this is what I mean. This is where the energy goes. So if I get bad comments like that, purely I'm just going to have to filter them out because there's no way that I could let them affect my mental health when I'm like I've got something so amazing from it you know so she would be my pure focus love and attention if I get bad comments on the side I can't let them start tearing my mental health down because that'll only affect me and her you know um so yeah of course no priorities Um, no definitely and I think that's something that's really important and I'm, I'm really grateful that you got to share like those that intimate side of your relationship and what it's like to be pregnant and young and a working well future working mother yeah 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 um, and I could tell at some points you wanted yeah. to tear up a little bit so um, no I'm really grateful that you shared all those with me and I'm really grateful that you were um, a guest on my podcast so thank I you so it. much thank you for having me I've had a very good time